Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome to another episode of World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today I am very proud to be able to present to you the season finale of the second season of A Game of Throws. And yes, we are going to be concluding this season in epic fashion. No regular throw for the season finale. Oh no, no, I've saved something pretty special for this episode. When I say special, I do mean it in every possible sense of the word. This is renamed user blah 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 the artist formerly known as Flambass. But even though he's the star of today's show, it's really not about him. You'll understand as the battle develops. So, um, just for completeness sake, I suppose we'll talk about the ship that he's sailing. Uh, it's tier 3. This is a tier 4 battle, so you should expect to see all kinds of boneheaded moves and decisions made because, you know, new players. Although, with the research bureau, it's not unusual to see experienced players, like Flambass himself, taking part in low tier battles as they regrind a particular ship line. Flambass isn't doing this, the Koenig Albert is a premium tier 3, so he's clearly not doing this for research bureau value, he's just doing it for shits and giggles. And there will be many shits, and giggles are plenty before this particular video is over. What do you need to know about the Koning Albert? Well, you really don't need to know anything about it. It's really not going to matter. It's a pretty good tier 3 premium, as tier 3 premiums go. Uh, it's a typical dreadnought battleship. It's got pretty strong armour, uh, decent guns, but, you know, horribly, horribly slow. And of course, in common with pretty much everybody else down here at tier 4 and below, no AA whatsoever. Well, that's a slight over-exaggeration, but only a very slight over-exaggeration. The anti-aircraft guns on this thing consist of four 88mm guns. Yes, that's right. Four. So it basically has no AA. Although there are ships down at this kind of level that actually have no AA. Like, none whatsoever. The Japanese Miyogi, for example, and there are two of them in this battle, one on each team, actually has no AA anti-aircraft defences at all whatsoever. And that can be a bit of a problem, because Tier 4 is where you first start to encounter aircraft carriers. <laughs> now to be fair, Tier 4 aircraft carriers are terrible. And I don't mean terrible in the inspiring terror sense of the word, I mean actually just more or less useless. Um, their aircraft regenerate very slowly, they have almost no health, um, they're very very slow, I mean they're faster than the ships involved in the battles obviously, but they're still really slow. But the thing is, they don't need to be very good when the ships you're attacking have no anti-aircraft defences. I want you to remember that simple fact, because it's going to be important later. <laughs> I know what's coming. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Flambass, now we had to execute a very, very risky turn there because he was basically giving broadside to the enemy Gangut. Um, but he did it in the safest way possible. I think he was safely out of range of the Gangut's guns when he started to execute the turn. So the Gangut did start shooting at the friendly Miyogi instead. So the Miyogi is now also executing a turn away and that's quite a strong enemy force coming around the northern corner of the slot here and there's not an awful lot to hold them back just Flambas himself one Miyogi and a destroyer and the destroyer of course is spotted by the enemy carrier who's coming in for a torpedo attack by the way watch this fairly good illustration of just how well kind of poor carrier look at that one that's all it gets to do a single torpedo drop and the dive bombers are a bit more effective but the torpedo planes are really not that much of a threat and Flambas was relatively easily, even in something as cumbersome as a tier 3 dreadnought type battleship, able to dodge that torpedo. But well, here's the thing. Unlike at higher tiers, where AA is just mostly ineffective, down here, AA is completely ineffective. Which means that even though they're only making one torpedo drop with every attack, they get to make every attack because nobody can shoot their aircraft down. Oh, there's the tier 4 German cruiser, the Karlsruhe. That's an extremely brave move from a light cruiser with two battleships in three. Okay, he's dead. <laughs> the enemy team have taken a battering here. They've suffered five casualties, and Flambass's team have only suffered two. Notice that Flambass's AA guns are still going. 
even though the Miyogis aren't because it doesn't have any <laughs> but despite the fact that his AA guns have been firing pretty much continuously for the last two minutes he still hasn't shot a single aircraft down in fact despite being pretty much under continuous air attack the entire duration of his participation in this battle I don't think he shoots a single aircraft down <laughs> it's uh, they are really that bad down here at tier three and four but anyway the enemy team are they're not really making the most of the uh, strength of numbers that they have on this flank I mean that's not altogether surprising of course I mean you, it's rare to see teamwork and coordination going on at tier 10 you shouldn't be surprised when you don't see it happening at tier 3 and 4 either but that is making things substantially easier for Flambas and the poor old Miyogi who has now just been sunk after being nickel and dime to death by that enemy carrier. There are two carriers, by the way, in play on each team on this map. But so far, the enemy's tactics over here appear to be just feeding one ship at a time around the northern end of the slot, which is allowing Flambats and, well, the G101 there as the only other surviving ship up here to take them apart in detail rather than all at the same time. So he is very wisely, I mean we're not talking next level big brain tactics here or anything, but if you can use terrain like that island to ensure that you only have to fight one ship at a time rather than all of them and the ship that has a line of sight to you, then you tuck in behind the island and do exactly that. Which is what he's trying to do, but they're probably going to want to sink that Dante Alighieri before the South Carolina comes around the corner and shifts the odds in the enemy team's favour. And it looks like some of those torpedoes are going to connect from the G101. That's uh, two of the... Oh, are you kidding me? 87 health. Right, finish him. Shots out. What? <laughs> what the hell? All right, secondaries do the job. And this ship has a lot of secondaries, by the way. 87 health, and it takes a couple of 305mm point-blank armor-piercing shots to the belt and survives, and then gets finished off by a single 105mm shell from the G101. Ah, uh, fair enough. Anyway, it's dead. And Flambas is likely to be very dead soon, too. The South Car I mean, he's angled against the South Carolina, and he does have tough armor, but hopefully he's going to be able to take the South Carolina with him because the South Carolina is given broadside and he isn't. And there are more torpedoes coming from the G101. The South Carolina, of course, is not his only problem. Shots out. Uh, what? Really? Let's try again. Oh, he took a big hit there. Man, what is this South Carolina made of? Because it's just not dying. I mean, it has a citadel, right? Yes, it does. There it is. Right. Okay. Well, he did well to kill the South Carolina, but there's no way he's going to survive the fight against the Mio. And, well, I mean, it's Flambass. He's been around the block a few times. He knows he doesn't need to win the fight. He just needs to take the Mio with him. And he's going to do that by ramming him. And there it is. So, 92,000 damage done in the Tier 3 battleship. That's not bad at all. And the ram was absolutely the right thing to do because there are now only three enemy ships left. Two battleships and a carrier against seven surviving members of Flambass's team, including three destroyers, which is really bad news for the battleships, and two aircraft carriers. And remember, basically the only thing on the enemy team that actually has any anti-aircraft defense is the enemy carrier. And even the enemy carrier's AA is bad. Okay, the enemy team have just managed to pull one of the kills back. They've sunk the class horn, so they've Nailed a destroyer. That's great news for the battleships, but they're still outnumbered two to one. It's three against six. And Flambas's team have ships inside their cap circle. Unfortunately, the ship inside the cap circle is a light cruiser. Uh, the French thing over there, whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. We're going to call it Dougie. Dougie is in a light cruiser under air attack and with a Russian battleship shooting at him. Good luck with that. But that Russian battleship and that enemy carrier are surrounded by basically two-thirds of Flambas's surviving teammates. Meanwhile, over here at the other end of the battle, the enemy Nassau, German Tier 3 battleship, incredibly slow and unusual. This is actually quite amusing. Its surface detection range is actually greater than the range of its guns. <laughs> so you will see it coming before it can shoot at you. And it's taken on the friendly Langley. 
Surprisingly, the Langley is proving to have better situational awareness than 90% of aircraft carrier players because he actually realises he's under attack. He's trying to get the island between himself and the Nassau's guns, but the island is so flat it isn't providing any cover whatsoever. The Nassau is getting hammered, not just by the Langley's aircraft, because he doesn't have any anti-aircraft guns. I mean, he does, but they're not capable of shooting anything down. But there's also a friendly destroyer coming back to defend the carrier, as a direct result of which that poor old Nassau caught in an aircraft carrier destroyer sandwich has just lost 10,000 health in the last 30 seconds. Unfortunately for the Langley, if he'd been actually completely unaware of what was going on and had just remained broadside onto the Nassau, he probably would have lived longer because the Nassau shells would have just overpenetrated and done very little damage. But angling away like that ensures that any shots that hit are actually going to penetrate, arm and detonate inside the carrier's hull ensuring that the Nassau does actually manage to take him down. He now turns his attention to the Valkyrie. Valkyrie, stop shooting. Valkyrie, why are you shooting? There is another carrier on the team, the Hosho, and the Langley still has aircraft up. They're keeping the Nassau spotted for you. The only thing you're achieving by shooting at him instead of smoking up and then shooting at him is allowing him to see where you are. So please, slow down, smoke up, stop shooting, and allow the two carriers to do what the two carriers do, and spot the target for you. But no. I mean, it's difficult to be too judgmental, I suppose. This could be a very, very new player, and he just doesn't understand basic tactics like that. But the end result is, the Nassau has survived on just a few thousand health, and he's taken down the Langley and the Valkyrie with him. Well, except he hasn't taken them down with him, because he's survived. The team do still have another carrier though, the Hosho. So the Nassau, on 651 health, and with no anti-aircraft fire power to speak of, now has to deal with a full strength Hosho. Meanwhile, at the other end of the map, the four remaining surviving friendlies who only had to deal with a single battleship and an aircraft carrier are now two remaining surviving friendlies who still only have to deal with a single battleship and an aircraft carrier. <laughs> I mean, although the Gangut is on very, very low health. And he's got a Dreadnought shooting at him. And not just any old Dreadnought. This is not just a Dreadnought. This is THE Dreadnought. HMS Dreadnought. A premium tier 3 Royal Navy battleship. And uh, our friend Dougie over there has done very, very well to manage to not die. Although he's no longer threatening the cap circle because that was suicidal. Speaking of suicidal, how the hell did the Dreadnought player not see that torpedo coming? It's not like he didn't see the... Oh, you know what? I mean, it wasn't that suicidal because, again, you know, tier 4 carriers are kind of crap. Yes, they can basically strike whoever they want, whenever they want, because nobody can shoot their aircraft down. But the strikes themselves are kind of anemic. I mean, the torpedo didn't do a lot of damage. I think the rocket attack planes actually did more damage. But the Wrighton is definitely on the wall for the Gangut. The only question is, can he take down Dougie with him? Um, yes, I think he can. Right, two on two. <laughs> it's difficult to see how the Dreadnought is going to be able to fail against the Hosho, however. I mean, the Hosho is given broadside, so most of these shots are likely to overpenetrate. But it only gets to drop a single torpedo at a time, and even if this torpedo hits, it's an airdrop torpedo, it's tier 4, it's going to do very little actual damage. And that one missed by a country mile, the Dreadnought didn't even have to manoeuvre or change his speed. I've got to admit, it's really difficult to see how the Dreadnought could possibly lose this fight. I mean, he's going to take some damage because he can't defend himself against the aircraft. But again, you'll notice that the Hosho is angling in, which means that any of the Dreadnought shots that hit are probably going to penetrate instead of over-penetrate. Although I do find myself asking the question, why is the Hosho heading towards the Dreadnought? It's a Dreadnought. It's slow. And you are a lot faster. And you've got better stealth. But, I mean, it's difficult to be too judgmental about it. It's nice to see a carrier actually making a fight of it, but he's definitely not going to win this fight. The Dreadnought's next salvo is going to sink him. Okay, two against one. Although that's it as far as the Dreadnought's concerned. It's way too slow to do anything about the Nassau over there, but it is right next to the enemy cap circle. And that's exactly what the Dreadnought's going to do, because there's very little that the Hosho surviving aircraft can actually do to him. 
So the dreadnought's going to sail with a cap circle, because that is the smart thing to do and really the only thing that he can do at this point. Meanwhile, at the other end of Iron Bottom Sound, <laughs> not only has the Hosho failed to sink the Nassau, he's only just found him. <laughs> <laughs> Let us not forget the Nassau is a battleship with stealth so bad that its surface detection range is actually greater than the range of its main battery guns. And somehow he managed to remain undetected <laughs> with an aircraft carrier looking for him. While he was waving a dirty great big I'm over here flag by flipping <laughs> the team's cap circle. <laughs> The Hosho is now surface, detecting him. It's not his aircraft that have found him. He's reversed into surface spotting range. <laughs> and the Nassau hasn't even got any heels left. He's still on 600 health. Now, to be fair to the Hosho, what he's doing here isn't completely stupid. He's reversed into the cap circle to ensure that the Nassau doesn't win by capping. But that's only going to work for as long as the Hosho is alive. <laughs> And because he was angled, all of the Nassau shots penetrated instead of over-penetrating. But the Hosho still has aircraft up. He's still got this. Remember, the Nass he only has to hit him with one torpedo. And you can't shoot down aircraft at Tier 4. So he's going to get five chances to hit and sink, because one hit is all it's going to take with 651 health. Five chances to hit and sink a dreadnought battleship with lousy AA, incapable of shooting any of his aircraft down, with a turning circle the size of the state of Nebraska that can be outrun by a Ford Fiesta. Oh, that one's missed. <laughs> That's all right. Four more attempts. Oh, one of those aircraft looks like it might be in trouble. No, don't worry about it. Purely cosmetic. The Nassau is going to shoot none of these aircraft down. Here he goes again. And no, that's bad. No, no, that's missed. That's going to sail harmlessly behind him. Oh, well, three more attempts. And the poor old Nassau can do nothing. Oh, oh, is one of those aircraft going to go down? No, of course it isn't. <laughs> it just looks like it's going to go down. That's just there for the benefit of the Nassau player to make him feel better about the zero aircraft that his guns are actually shooting down. Oh, show's coming around again. This is a really, really bad drop angle, giving the Nassau the maximum opportunity to escape. But even though he's got three shots left, and that one looks like it might have actually hit, the Hosho's too late because the Nassau finished capping. And <laughs> seven against three, the enemy team managed to pull it back to one against one, and won by capping out with a dreadnought battleship that spent the last seven minutes of that battle on 651 health right next to a friendly aircraft carrier whose aircraft he was 100% completely incapable of shooting down and somehow managed to not only sink the aircraft carrier but survive multiple torpedo drops from a carrier player who didn't even bother to try to find him until there were only two minutes of the game left. I did promise you at the beginning of the video that you were in for a special season finale of the second season of A Game of Throws and I'm fairly confident you'll all agree that I delivered on that promise. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure there'll be more spectacular throws to come in Season 3, which will be coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this season finale. I hope it hasn't inflicted too much damage on your brain cells. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.